<laughs> hey, we're live. We're live. Go, Alan. <laughs> oh, my God. That is like the worst oh, wow. intro we've done in a while. Yeah. Hello, everyone. It's uh, the Crafty Boys in Blur Vision. Blurry Vision. Props, you know, props to do it it original, though. Hey, I, don't you know, think you, I don't think you have copied yourself. I hope not. Although if we go back in the archive, we probably I am find not similar. willing to go back in the archive <laughs> to find yeah. that out. I did that once. <laughs> so, uh, hey everyone, uh, the Crafty Boys here, and uh, it is episode one hundred and thirty-one. Holy Moses! It's a palindromic wonder. I've copied that from somebody, but anyway, um, how's it going? Oh, the peanut oh, gallery is arriving in all their. Why is it? Oh, good lord. Hang it's on. It's going beer. Alan, take on the show. All right. Another so call. we've got uh, a special beer uh, for tonight. Uh, I don't know which how many beers we've done on this show. It's like it's like it's over 150 anyway. Uh, but we're gonna add to, to our roster. Uh, I think Dave, you picked this beer, did you not? No, actually, this was Shane's pick. This was Shane's uh, pick. This was Shane's okay. pick. Yeah. So we are sampling tonight from Phillips Brewing. In wait, Victoria, before before you, before you say the name, you have to say oh. it right. You have to whisper it. Okay. Do you want to whisper it? No, no, go ahead. Okay. It's the Phantoma. 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 I just spat all over my webcam. Which is um, which is a pomegranate dark saison. I'm uh, opening it. Strong yes, beer. I, I showed this 2%. to some people uh, last week when after I bought it, and they laughed <laughs> like dark saison. What the hell? So uh, this this beer is on the block for uh, for uh, you know. Phantoma is the complex dark saison infused with pomegranate and molasses. Spirited fruit notes rise through a soulful malt profile and emerge through vaporous esters to create a unique and fruitful farmhouse ale. Did you say sulfa malt? No. Who knew that pharmacological hey. companies were getting into the beer game? <laughs> yeah. Who knew that this came from World uh, Soulful. Soulful. soulful okay i was gonna be all like yes in world war ii the american army carried this beer on the battlefield and would pour bottles over the gaping open wounds of their soldiers <laughs> i just i picture that re-editing uh saving private ryan you know my liver i know i'm pouring beer on it <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> that's all right. I'm pouring my beer. There. All right, that's it. I'm getting a new webcam. This thing can't focus on me at all. So anyway, um, wow, this is yes. purple. It's grape juice, folks. This is grape so juice. It is purple. It has actually kind of got a purpley sort of tinge to it, and it smells it like grape juice. Like, remember grape Dimatap that you would have when oh, you were god, a kid, yeah. and you oh, get yeah. a clear. It looks like that. It's not quite well. It doesn't smell like that though. No. It's grape juice. It definitely has a grapey kind of flavor to it, um, which of course is the, you know, the fruit that's in it, the pomegranate. Uh, the reason I picked this beer is uh, when I was at the store a couple weeks ago, uh, I was grabbing the beer uh, that I wanted, and I couldn't get a beer that I wanted, so. I tried this because it was, it just, I, I just like the, look at this. I mean, look at the artwork. It's kind of cool. It's pretty good. It's very it? simple, but I liked it. I, it was the hat that really grabbed me. So uh, that's basically what, uh, I have to admit the, the artwork kind of confused me. I thought it was a picture of a pretzel wearing a hat. And, uh, <laughs> okay. I'm like, is there supposed to be pretzels? <laughs> I mean, if you look at it, why are there no like pretzels pretzel in this beer? I don't understand. There's no beer in the pretzel. Um. <laughs> okay, now I see it. Yeah. It, so I told I saw it as soon as he said it. I'm like, yeah, kind of does. <laughs> <laughs> why would a pretzel be wearing a hat? <laughs> and I actually originally thought the like the hat is just the is the black background, right? But then I saw you know this red outline around it, and I was like, that's a really big hat. It's like a bowler hat with like some sort of like a pirate flip on the back or something like a tri-corner. 
Uh, by the way, uh, before we talk about anything else, we have to address one incredibly important issue that uh, somebody left a comment uh, on our channel that said, does Dave really like beer? <laughs> and uh, so they're, they're calling you out, Dave. They're calling you out. Actually, who I'm talking about here is uh, is uh, somebody who watches this periodically, uh, Dave, who, 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 there you go, his name's also Dave. Do they um, know us? <laughs> what? <laughs> it, Dave again, who uh, is also a YouTube type of uh, dude who likes to, who likes what we do, I hope. He keeps coming back anyway. But ah. uh, yeah, but he called you out, Dave, about whether or not you like beer. Um, so I really dude, hope What do you have that, to say uh, for yourself, Dave? Exactly. Can, can you defend yourself? All right, Dave. Well, we're listening. The answer is is I used to not much at all. In that fact, very not true. at all. I remember when I first met Dave. The Dave, uh, you hate. Well, you didn't hate beer. You were just like, yeah, no, no, no. Well, no, I I think we're getting close to hate territory. That might be a little strong, but I just I didn't do beer. That's true. When I first met you, I didn't do beer. Yeah, you no, were like, white wine like, I don't like it's white wine spritzers and like <laughs> grape flavored diamond tab. Um, God, I haven't no, thought of that. No, it, it was it was Shirley Temples. <clears throat> Shirley, Shirley Temples. Temples. Yeah. But <laughs> oh my! Oh, oh my! Sure, he, his his thing was Shirley Temples and crack cocaine. <laughs> what do you like to have? I like to have sour fire top. Alan, crack what did I tell you before? Mm. okay Shh. hey so are we liking this beer i am yes. liking the beer i particularly like this one i don't i mean it's 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 different enough the pomegranate flavor is definitely pushing it to uh a new uh what do you want to call it a new level a new um i don't know what what's the word new but, direction uh, a new direction so uh yeah i give I'm it a thumbs up it. I, uh, I think you got to hang on a second because mm, I didn't really give a full answer. Okay, sure. To uh, Dave, I think you said this fellow's name was Dave McGann. Um, yes. Yeah. So for <laughs> you Dave, gonna, like call him out now. Screw you, Dave. No, no, not at all. <laughs> I, it's it's not hard to tell. I basically what it is is since I've known you two and been doing this for a while i have developed a taste for some beers i'm still not as big a fan as shane and alan i'm not sure i ever would be honestly but i definitely appreciate it more now than i used to definitely yeah i would say that you've definitely come around to the reality that is beer um mm. Because you should. <laughs> well, it's pretty amazing once you get into it. Because if you're not a beer person, you think beer is shit. And it's one thing, right? Mm -hmm. But I guess like any topic, you start digging into it. And you realize, holy shit, there's actually a thousand ways you can go with this thing. Well, and that's did you what, actually that's what did you discover Rattlers on this show, or was it something you actually were a Rattler fan beforehand? Or no, I, I discovered them when I was in Holland. Uh, okay, yeah, because you almost literally can't drink water over there. No, true. That's what you kept telling us. That yeah, uh, that that I can. That water is safer than beer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, and that's it. I can absolutely understand why europeans and i include english in this because i'm north american so i don't distinguish why europeans made freaking beer because wow the water is bad over I there don't, i don't recall actually yeah when i when i was in europe the last time um i don't actually recall ever drinking like tap water i might have had water from a bottle but i don't recall drinking tap water because i was i was probably drunk most of the time but uh <laughs> i mean to be honest that was it was a vacation what do you do when you're i am going to obliterate my brain for the next two and a half weeks and when i'm back i i may not remember who i am but um yeah i just think that uh, uh 
water. I take it. I take for granted us us incredibly spoiled people on the West Coast, mm -hmm. where we have, um, in this city and in Victoria, we have a significant amount of you know a water supply that we can draw from. Uh, that uh, isn't gross. Is that the word I'm looking for? It's not gross. No, it's um, good water. Yeah, it's I mean, good water. Good water. and you know, when uh, a few years ago we went to visit my wife's uh, family in rural Ontario, and yeah. it was mostly on well water, and it was mm. disgusting. The water in Ontario, in rural Ontario, is absolutely disgusting. And uh, if it, if the water in Europe is as bad as Dave is saying it is, then I can totally see where he's coming from. Mm. Wow. Anyway, wow. back to the beer. Back to the beer. Beer. I am really liking this. Um, I find that a lot of seasonal beers... This is a limited release seasonal. Um, tend to leave you wanting. Uh, you know, they, they're in a, a rush to get it out. It's not a regular beer. So, you know, like they, I don't know, it's just kind of a one off. And sometimes, you know, they, they leave you, there's something lacking from it. There's there's a little bit of body missing or some mouth feel or, or something like that. This has everything. Um, this has enough malt, enough sweetness, enough flavor, enough body and mouth feel uh, that makes me want to have another sip. Um, this is absolutely, it, it kind of reminds me of like, say, a barrel aged um beer like say uh you know singularity from driftwood or something like that where you know it's really expensive but it's got that sort of that that flavoring you know that that really sort of it like it melts your palate you know um and uh that's what this beer is doing without being barrel aged or anything like that i'm really enjoying this um and uh, I think it's a good one. And I think you should pick it up while you've got the chance. Yeah, because it might be gone tomorrow. I mean, I... I might already be here's, gone. <laughs> here's the thing that I've, I've started doing, that if I'm actually at the liquor store and I have the ability to see beer, I know that we want to cover. Um, I, mean, I, I think I started this back in December. Remember when I said, I picked up this one and this one, and you were like, okay, let's do those. Uh, pretty much because I knew that they were around and I knew that we potentially could find them. So, I mean, if, if this one here, uh, you couldn't have gone. Like, if you guys were unable to find it, then I just would have drank it. Um, so, yeah. um, so there's really nothing lost there. I mean, and that's the thing is that, uh, Dave, you did the same thing, uh, I don't know, it was a number of months ago. I think you bought a beer that we were going to do and then you bought the a beer that you because it was your pick the following week i think and then you chose um something mm -hmm. like then yeah. so i think that actually kind of works somewhat anyway i mean but again at the end of the day if you guys can't get the beer or i can't get the beer whatever we either just keep going or we just completely uh find something new and then and then we drink the beer so you know those are the things uh, yeah. So anyway, um, overall, uh, thumbs up, uh, pomegranate, yeah, uh, dark saison from Phillips. Um, Phillips. I got my thumbs up. I got my toes up. I've got another <laughs> appendage up. Um, <laughs> well, on good. that note, everyone uh, here, Alan, you need one of these. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, you gotta stick that right up there. Um, anyway, <laughs> we're driving the Happy Valley Road. If you know what I mean. <laughs> uh, so what's going on this week, boys? Like, what have you guys been up to? What uh, any news uh, that we should be talking about? Some cool stuff that's going on. Some, you know, are, are we rich? Well, interesting. Um, I found out uh, that uh, a very popular beer. Uh, a limited release, very re limited release uh, of Singularity, which I just talked about, which is um, from Driftwood. It is a uh, bourbon barrel aged imperial stout. Uh, it comes out 
um, once every so often. Um, it's out in, um, I think, Victoria and Vancouver as of like two days ago. Extremely limited release. It's a 13.2% uh, 13 uh, alcohol by volume. Whoa. Um, and it is amazing. Shane, you and I tried this at the um, the uh, uh, Christmas beer fest. Uh, is that the one where we, we got instead of them having singularity, like they were out of there? The, no, it was coming the next day or something. No, it, it's so we got the singularity instead of the uh cellar dweller, they didn't have the cellar dweller, uh, so okay. they had singularity instead, right? Right, and this was it was really good. Um, I so loved it. I would recommend getting this beer if you can. Do not wait, go now. And get it. I'm leaving. Okay. <laughs> I'll be back. Um, so the singularity that the uh, is the bourbon uh, the bourbon aged barrel in the bourbon barrel aged imperial stout at 13.2 percent pale chocolate roasted barley uh, summit hops. Uh, get get it today. If you don't, yes. you're a fool. Um, Available now at Cascadia. Sorry, what peanut gallery? It's good? We don't know if it's actually good because we've never had it. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> but we might have to. Hey, peanut gallery, do you want some beer? Then you better come here and get it before I ignore you again. Now, um, Dave, I don't know if you know this, uh, but Shane and I are pretty big fans of Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. <clears throat> it is the movie, well, maybe not the movie, but it's one of the movies that defined our youth and allowed us to start Excellent. saying things like excellent and hey, dude. And uh, stuff like Hoser. that. Hoser. Oh, wait, wrong movie. What? <laughs> Hoser. <laughs> Hoser. Yeah, wrong movie. Um, anyway. Well, 10 bucks. So, 10 bucks. So, so uh, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure came out in 1989. Uh, they had a sequel, Bogus Journey, which came out a couple years later. And then it's been nothing ever since. Well, not nothing. They did a cartoon and. There was some sort of like a live action TV show using other actors that lasted like three episodes or something like that. Anyway, there's been talk for almost what, what is it like 20 years now of almost, them doing yeah. a third movie? Uh, and it has been uh, a long time, it's been a long time, and now the third movie is closer than ever. Mm -hmm. Uh, in fact, uh, Digital Spy. Dot com released a uh, an article this past week, actually the day after our last episode, um, in which they interviewed a Bill and Ted uh, writer to find out how the the movie is uh, going to go, what the holdup is, and essentially the third movie is tentatively titled "Bill and Ted Face the Music." Uh, it's going to uh, feature. Um, Bill and Ted, the, the actors, Alex Winter and Keanu Reeves, uh, they're going to be playing their characters in their 50s. Um, they're going to, at some point, go back in time to uh, the Circle K where their younger selves had just met Rufus. I don't know how all that's going to actually play into the, into the movie, but they said that that is a part of it. I'm already um, worried. It, it, it actually, it sounds pretty cool to me. I, I don't know. Um, they've, they've signed on a, um, a, uh, a, a director, uh, all this stuff. The only thing they don't have is the actual money to make the movie. This is where the delay is. So all the studios are interested in Bill and Ted's, but what they want to do is a reboot. They want to basically remake the 1989 film with uh, kids from today. 
And they're like, no, no, no. What we actually want to do is make a film with the original actors in their 50s. But the studios don't want to do that. So So that's the whole assumption that kids can't handle seeing anything other than kids on the big screen. Uh, Well, I I guess it's saying that kids are the main people that go to the movies. It will appeal to us, but how many of us and how many of us will wait for it to, um, you know, to come out on video before we actually see it. I'll be there on opening night. Um, but how many others like me will there be? I, you know, I don't know. It's a very good question. I mean, a lot of us uh, would never want to stand out and you know line overnight for a movie that might suck. <laughs> <laughs> totally never done that. Uh, God. <laughs> um. I, you know, I, 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 because I've been, I've been, I've been watching this whole thing play out, you know, through what little trickles of media here and there. I mean, Alex Winter, who plays uh, um, Bill, um, is he's become like a, a director of uh, of films as well. So he's been doing that for a while, and this is sort of, I think, this is kind of one of his. I, I don't know. Would you call it a pet project? Maybe like yes. I was in this movie a long time ago. Uh, I talked to a guy I still, you know, see once yes. in a while and hang out with. Yes. And he was like, yeah, totally. I mean, I went to the Matrix stuff and now I'm set for life. So, you know, let, let's go do this. I'm surprised Reeves isn't actually funding this whole thing. Uh, it seems a bit weird. But again, um, I don't know if he has the money to fund the whole thing. Well, from what I've read, he's got lots of dough. He's doing. I'm sure he's got lots of movies. dough. I don't know if he's got that much dough. You know who I, I mean, actually it takes a lot see. of money to fund a movie. True, true. Um, but you know who I would like to see in the film uh, is William Sadler, uh, who played Death in uh, Bogus Journey. Uh, because William Sadler is one of those actors that, uh, you know, many years ago, I had no clue who the guy was. I saw him in as Death. I thought he did okay. Uh, but the, he was just an actor, right? He was just there. He did the part yeah. and he left. Um, but since then, I've actually uh, sort of taken notice of, I've taken notice of, of him as a, as a performer and I've seen a lot of other things that he's done um, because uh, including did, Die Hard 2. Yeah, exactly. Because he, he was the major villain in Die Hard or one of the major villains in Die Hard 2 uh, where he's nude doing like Tai Chi and killing his television with the remote. Um, but there's, but he's also done other stuff. Like he's done a lot of other things. Like he was in the, the show. Uh, there was a television program uh, a number of years ago called Roswell and he was in that he was like the sheriff one of the lead oh, characters yeah 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 and okay. uh so and i liked that show i thought it was really good it was only like three seasons long and it got canned but they closed it really nicely um but you know it was basically kind of just a little cute show that had uh, sadler in it for the entire thing so and i you know it was that show that i kind of was like yeah you know what? he's actually really he's way better than i ever thought he would be um at anything for for being an actor that he just was not a character actor that you saw you know in episode 4.19 of show title x and you know and then you saw him the next week in another show so you know he's got he's got stuff and i would like to see him again as death for whatever reason i don't i can't think of any reason why death would show up again um but you never know they'd find a way Kind of got to have death in a uh, in a in a he has like a, a hat listen, and, a, and a thing. One thing that they they have said that they are going to do is they're going to pay tribute to George Carlin. George Carlin's death yeah. is going to have, play a major role in this proposed third film. So in that case, maybe death does have a role. That's actually I hadn't thought of that. Not so. Ooh, ooh. I see what you're doing there. Uh, I yeah, that would actually be really cool because um, I gather uh, Carlin will, I mean, he, as you were saying, he'll be addressed as to why he's not around or why Rufus isn't around. And uh, what was the um, the the scene they the the scene that's being talked about where they you know they they actually land in the Circle K parking lot mm-hmm. and they see themselves. I guess they they're going to actually interact with themselves. How the yeah. hell they're gonna do that? That'd be kind of cool. I don't know. 
Um, <clears throat> although a story modern, that broke modern uh, technology, William. Well, uh, a story that broke the other day um, uh, that came across one of my artificial intelligence notification feeds, which I use Google Alerts. Um, was there's this thing? Actually, it was kind of gross, but um, a uh, basically there's a guy that's that's using artificial intelligence and machine learning to do video composition, not composition, composite video. So they're basically taking uh, the face of somebody famous and putting them on the bodies of porn stars. What? It's, it's yeah, it's a thing. Anyway. It, it came across, it was a machine learning article, um, and it basically it was talking about how these, uh, it, if you go online and you find a high resolution photograph of somebody famous, which is kind of the thing, uh, you would then take a, an HD porn video, uh, or actually it doesn't actually matter. Some of them I gather are really uh, like grainy and not the quality is not great. Um, and take the face of that famous person, the this algorithm can go in and take the face and basically do it well enough where it's almost indistinguishable from reality. Like you, if you were not paying attention, you might go, wow, boy, that's so weird that Lou Gossett Jr. is in a porn video. Wow, he's got a huge <laughs> Like, you know, and of course they focus on females, but there you go. Yeah, that was the first thing in my mind. Lou Gossett Jr. in a porn film, but basically, yeah, I mean, <laughs> and, but but the, the technology is, is that it, the discussion has sort of erupted where, uh, you know, the copyright sort of addicts are kind of like that's copyright infringement. Well, is it because if you're releasing, you know, high media f resolution media files out to the to the the press, like, uh, are you granting them access to that? And but again, you're not it's not protected so you're anyone could download it um and then of course uh you have the people that are like that's privacy well no it's a pornographic movie that they've taken the face and put it on the body of of the performer in the in the porn video so that's not really privacy invasion and, and it would just basically go, the arguments go on and on and on but um one argument from the individual who uh I guess started this whole thing um, who might not be, but anyway, he said that uh, the technology would have been invented anyway. It's actually already exists, but doing this where basically you can take a cloud machine um, that has a, uh, some AI software in it. You could ask it to do anything with video. Like here's the, here's the, the assets. Here's the image. We want you to do this do it as well as you can and then it just does it for the human being and so i don't know i just thought it was kind of bizarre uh <laughs> and we're drinking beer so why not talk about it um so what do you guys think about because because the my the thread going back to what we were saying is that it, it is possible to be able to take that level of performance and and merge it together with footage shot you know recently or this year uh, to put it back into the film and actually have it interact with people. Um, because I don't know if you think about like back to the future Two, um, where you had the scene in the kitchen, uh, with the thing that came out of the ceiling and you had Michael J. Fox, I think in five different shots or five different characters or whatever, however many it was. I and it was, was it three and they had to glue the set pieces down so that nothing moves. So that the camera they were using, which was like, you know, a motion controlled camera, um, you could actually have character a give something to character B and have it look real enough that it's actually happening. And you know, like Biff in his car interacting with his old self yeah. and, and young self. So, um, but this is kind of the next evolution of that, where it's like, you can take, existing footage that has not been planned for some sort of special effect and go damn it man you know we really need to have uh that character do that thing with that other character uh and give them the plans of the death star or whatever it is and actually have that happen and have it look absolutely real and which gives you that you know eventually then somebody goes 
but if it's not really real then what is reality so i'm going to drink more beer well i'm reminded of it was uh, a number of years ago um and and this is old technology now but somebody uh, i can't remember who it was it was a vacuum cleaner company made a commercial where they took a uh, video of fred astaire from a one of his dancing movies or something and digitally altered oh, yeah. it so that he's dancing with the vacuum cleaner right in and a they commercial had, yeah remember that, yeah that was like 20 years ago even um yeah so how i i think there's an ethical dilemma of putting somebody in a position to sell your your product when they're not around to approve of selling that of, of that product well in the case of of fred astaire the estate was paid absolute money for that and i'm and i think but the, still, also they had to pay whoever owns the copyright to the thing just keep going and, and and that's all well and good but what if fred astaire dug himself well, out of his grave and said dudes yeah i mean i mean for all we know that is something that he may i mean he couldn't have guessed what technology would have led to you know in the future after after he died right i mean he, he may have been so, uh, vehemently against that and who are we to tarnish his memory by assuming that he's okay with the modern world's memory of him is him dancing with a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to think of what other commercials that you had. Like, um, uh, I'm, I'm kind I'm of asking the, the, that Astaire actually cares. Well, and you know what? He probably, maybe he doesn't. I mean, I, I'm just, it's just the point, right? Yeah. Oh, apparently, Fred Astaire also sold the Dirt Devil. Wow. <laughs> um, yeah, here we go. So there's an article from 2009 talking about the bizarreness of dead celebrities um, coming back from the dead to sell products that you know didn't exist at the time. Um, Fred Astaire with the with the broom Swiffer vacuum cleanery thing. Um, You've also got who else? Did, uh, I can't. Wasn't there a, a, a few videos that were like that? They weren't necessarily selling stuff, but you'd get mashup ads where you'd have these yeah. old musical stars or whatever, and they'd be interacting with. Well, there was also some uh, some incidents in, in some instances where uh, deceased performers showed up on stage as holograms mm -hmm. at concerts to perform uh there was a two-pack uh, one with um yes. some other rapper i remember yeah but again i mean there's no way that tupac could have okayed that of course his estate would yeah. uh so but, actually here's an article from 1997 that's talking about this um fred astaire can't sell vacuum cleaners without the family's okay but if a producer wants to stick him in a documentary about dance, then he's fair game. Um, so basically the federal court, uh, and this of course is a year before the millennium act when they revamped a lot of the copyright to include a lot of digital stuff. But uh, so this is a little bit before that. So maybe, maybe this is when that was being worked on, but anyway, so some ground rules have been set in 1990 or 1984 by the California state uh, uh law superior court says uh if you want fred astaire to sell your dirt devil vacuum cleaner in a commercial uh which was a super bowl uh commercial back in 1984 or five uh that was 1985 um, or john wayne in your beer commercial that one i remember um then you first have to get and get approval from the stars survivors so basically they're saying that if it's a non-commercial venture, so they're saying that a, a documentary about dance in the 20th century 
uh, could include Fred Astaire. Uh, but if you're selling a product, of course, you have to pay the estate. So, um, so yeah. So I mean, Basque. Uh, it's it's very interesting how um, you know a lot of these individuals have, uh, or a lot of these companies have sort of gone back, and a lot of these estates. It looks like um, are saying that it's not necessarily. And but the argument that they're actually using is what you're saying, Alan. Um, it's not necessarily uh, an an estate issue. It's really a morality issue, because yeah. as you're saying, these individuals who've died ages ago, like Astaire, uh, Estelle, Estelle, Astaire, uh, Fred Astaire died in 1987. So uh, the Super Bowl ad uh, was in 1997. So or maybe 96. Uh, but anyway, whatever it was. So you know, it's 10 years after the guy's been gone. So you know, this kind of leads me to wonder. You and I and Dave here, um, let's pretend for a minute that we are not famous, but we have some sort of public persona that people might recognize, maybe even in a small circle. But at least somebody might go, oh, hey, you're the dude from the thing. Now, if somebody decided after we're gone to go, OK, well, there's footage of Alan falling on a pizza. We want to take that facial image is, but... and, exactly, and use that to do this thing you know, something else with it, whatever it might be. Are we going to have to think about the fact that we have billions of people that are readily putting photographs, video, and imagery, uh, audio, whatever else, text online, and then we die? No, what? I don't what think so. Do we have to write in our wills that anything I put on well, social media is copyrighted? You might by my want estate? to, but I think in the future, the bigger danger is companies getting a hold of your DNA and creating a clone of you to, for spe specifically to use in their marketing ventures. And they would own that clone of you. Yeah. Well, let me tell you a story about DNA. Um, this past holiday season, uh -huh. my parents thought it would be a cool idea to uh, do the ancestry DNA thing. Of course, which I I did. I I spat in the thing and did the thing, and then I gave it to them, and they sent it off. But here's the thing: I actually do have an issue with it, where. I didn't want to spoil it for my parents. Um, so I just went ahead and did it. But I am not going to I'm not going to say that I am 100 percent cool with it because I've just provided my DNA to a private company that says and you paid for it too. Paid paid for that paid them um, for the privilege. But at the same time, when you sign up and all these sorts of things are, you know, you're filling out all the stuff about what your DNA is doing, like what they might, might want to do with it. Um, part of it is is genome mapping and things like that. So in theory, uh, you know, there's some scientific process going on where a university or some sort of organization is wanting to map the genome and be able to determine uh, whatever diseases and, you know, this kind of stuff, like what kind of combinations, like this particular line of people joined with this line and what kind of diseases came out of that and yeah. what, what was prevented, what, what was made more prevalent. Um, and then there's a lot of other things. And, and basically uh, at the end of the day, you can say what happens to, uh, in theory, you can say what happens to your information where I said, um, you know, I don't want my, I don't want anyone else on the system to be able to figure out who I am. I don't want any of them to any of their information to be available to or any of my information be available to them. Um, and also when you're done, you know, destroy what you have, um, provide a copy to this particular research program, but not this one, you know, you can kind of pick and choose, but again, they're private companies. They say they're going to do these things. Mm -hmm. So am I going to wake up in a jelly filled tube uh you know 500 years in the future and go what the fuck i was just watching the waltons what the hell you know and that's like that is that going to happen granted if they did that i would have no memory of it but um yeah 
And besides, look at this. They're going to clone me. Or, or worse, you're going to wake up one morning and there's going to be a copy of you staring at you. He's going to be standing above your bed and he's going to kill you and replace you. <laughs> but I'd have to have sex with him first. No. <laughs> are you saying that if your clone of you showed up and were like, hey, what's it going? How are you? You're like, <laughs> Let's do this. No, that's weird. <laughs> That's that's weird. Oh, gross. You're saying you would not want to rock your own bones? I'm just no. saying, man. I'm just saying. You have the opportunity to rock your own self's bones. You know what you like? It's the perfect It's the perfect opportunity. Wow. Dude, you remember that thing I like? Oh, I know that thing. You're going to do that thing to me, too. Well, I'll totally do that thing, and we'll do the thing together. Oh, my God. <laughs> Could you imagine? Like... The only individual oh. on this planet that knows what you like in the sack is going to be in your bedroom ready to stab your brains out. But first you'd be like, wait a minute. <laughs> wait. We have an opportunity here. You know that thing in high school? Remember that thing you like to do with that? You want to do that again? Because I know all about that thing and you know about the thing too. So could you imagine what we could do together? And then take over the world after that. Um <laughs> <laughs> and, and getting back on this like ancestry DNA type thing, I read an article recently where uh, some guy had actually sent in samples to ancestry DNA, uh, 23 and me and, and a third company. I can't remember what it is. And when he got the results back, every well, single result different. was, was hugely different, which says to me, would not surprise me to be honest, shit up. Um, I would say that, yeah, I mean, a lot of, and it, I mean, again, it depends on the quality because here's the thing. Yes, you provided your DNA, but really aside from this pool of individuals have similar DNA and they seem to have come from these other places and, you know, and, and these other things where you can go, yes, these diseases were prevalent in this particular part of your genome or whatever the fuck, but outside of that, it depends on the quality of the information they have that has nothing to do with DNA because they're taking DNA and going, okay, so we have this DNA, all right, and we have this person's name. So let's put those together. Okay, <laughs> now, now what have we got? We've got a... Okay. So it's more of a social experiment than is Pretty anything much. else. I mean, the, the, the aspects of all kinds of things you know, become... I mean... For the remember that you know that there was that that television program called Who Do You Think You Are or Who Do You Think You Are Really or whatever. No, I have no recollection. Where all those okay. famous people were doing. Their yeah, routine. basically, famous people are taken on a journey to go. And I've only ever watched one episode of that of that particular show, um, which had um, what's his name? Uh, uh, oh my lord, um, Roy Calhoun. <laughs> Roy Calhoun. I was saying Boo Earns. Um, no, the uh, he's uh, 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 the guy who played House um, was his. Oh yeah, that guy. Uh, Dave, you must know this. Oh my god, I do know it, and it's totally escaping me. Okay, brain. hang on, I'm googling it here. House, uh, blah, 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 James, James uh, Coburn, Hugh Laurie, James, James Coburn, Hugh Laurie, Hugh, uh, uh, Hugh Laurie, Mark Hamill. <laughs> keep going, keep going. You might get it eventually. It. it <clears throat> Childish Gambino. Jenna Elfman. Child, oh, my God. Okay, we're talking about Stephen Fry here. Okay. <laughs> so Stephen Fry did this thing where he went from... Uh, Stephen Fry he went, he, went to, he went to his hometown, and then he went to a variety of other cities around the world, um, basically tracking down his heritage, where he knew certain stories, He you know, because Grandma X told him, or Aunt whatever said... And they basically just kind of followed it backwards to kind of figure out where he really came from and how these individuals they all were all connected. And where he had he had some you know really old photographs of, of family members, and they were able to track it down to the actual house in the backyard where these photos were taken. These kinds of things, which I think is fascinating. I think everyone wants to know uh, where we came from. Now the thing you now here's the thing. I don't really care a huge amount about where i came from um you know it's interesting to me and i like it 
But I want to know what Neanderthal or what, you know, dude on the plains of wherever, uh, you know, stubbed his toe on a rock and, you know, had wild monkey sex with somebody um, that he stumbles across and, you know, and or her, who knows? That's the kind of stuff I want to know. Like, I want to know 5,000 years ago. I don't want to know just, you know, the last couple, you know, 100 or 150. I want to go back further. I want to know. I honestly want to know. Am I a Cylon? That's what I want to know. Because I watched that show and they were like 300,000 years ago. And I'm just like, hello. Spoilers, by the way, if you haven't watched the new Battlestar Galactica. The new Battlestar Galactica. But uh, but there you go. Which I, Have you guys seen the new Battlestar? The new, the 2004 uh, Battlestar? 2.0? Mm. No. Well, I'm going to spoil it for you. Essentially, the I whole, I, the, I'm not gonna whole thing. The whole thing uh, culminates where uh, they have uh, basically they figure out that uh, the you know the people in the ship armada that's trying to get back to you know Earth, uh, they figure out that they get back to a planet that's their planet supposedly they think they're not quite sure, uh, but eventually they land here, but it's you know like three hundred thousand years ago, and they go, well you know there's only a few of us left and if we're going to survive, we better start breeding. So, Hey, what are those dudes over there? And they basically are like, you know, part, you know, I don't know, whatever they actually say it, I think in the show, but basically pre homo erectus, you know, kind of people. And they're like, we yeah. could cross breed with them. And I'm just like, really? <laughs> okay. Uh, but yeah, so the whole, the whole point is, is that, you know, um, they basically figure out, that there are humans and Cylons and the Cylons are kind of human and they already know then they're and they realize that everyone's kind of a Cylon. And so, you know, the Cylons basically seeded our planet to become, you know, what we are today. And therefore the whole thing that in our future, uh, we will eventually uh, all become Terminators and I don't know, populate okay. the universe or something. So anyway, but the point is, I want to know if I'm a Cylon. That's really all I want to know. Okay. So take my genetic code. Tell me if I'm a Cylon. By your command. Thank By you. your command. I'm sorry. I I can't I can't get into battles the new battles new Battlestar Galactica because the original okay. Battlestar Galactica is is it that that's it. Well, the the one problem I have with the old really? Battlestar Galactica, which is you know fucking amazing anyway, but is the your entire species with the exception of a bunch of ships trying to get to earth um are annihilated and then episode two of the battle of the original Battlestar series uh they decide to go to a you know yeah that's a casino we can totally make some money your entire race has just been like obliterated except for a handful of people by this robotic race who are like, you're going to die. And you want to go to the casino? <laughs> like, we're screwed. We may as well spend it all. Like, you know, that's kind of what I get from that. <laughs> Where the new, the new Battlestar Galactica um, was a little more realistic in a way. And like, oh, my God, we've just been attacked by, oh, run away. And then they all well, run and, and, and the way you 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 say it, it kind of makes sense because in the original Battlestar Galactica, I kind of, I I don't know if they really spoke to. I mean, I didn't watch it religiously or anything, uh, but you know how their their helmets look like you know like the Sphinx. They had like very sort of uh, Egyptian kind of stuff going right, on, right. and that was never really explained to me. And I, I you know. The mean? fact that in the new Battlestar Galactica, they ended up in Earth's history and gave birth to modern humans, you know, where, you know, they maybe created the, helped them create the pyramids or whatever, you know, that kind of maybe makes sense. Um, Not me. I'll go with that. Sure. Uh, did you ever watch the original Battlestar, Dave? You must have. Uh, yeah, I watched some. Um, I like like Alan. I wasn't religious about it at all. 
I didn't mind it, I guess. Uh, but I guess it didn't really grab me. Not the way like the really quality stuff like Airwolf did. Oh yeah, Airwolf. That was a good show. I gotta be honest, man. I was not into Airwolf uh, when it was on. What? I became a fan of reruns. You're I, an idiot. Here's the thing. I well, um, <laughs> well, here's the thing. I don't actually You're going remember. Off the island. Damn it. Um, I don't actually remember when it was on because I remember that uh, Todd was a huge fan of Airwolf. Uh, but I think okay, I gotta look this up. When was Airwolf on? What was uh, about 1985? It premiered because I think I was so yeah, 84 to 86. So here's the thing. Okay. Um, I think that yes, 84. My major problem was that I was really into the A Team, Knight Rider, and uh, and um. There's another Dukes show. of Hazard. Dukes of Hazard, thank you. At yeah, that exact same time. Of time Dukes, Dukes was actually Dukes of Hazard well, uh, premiered in 1979. Yeah, exactly. So we had a whole bunch of stuff going into 1984 that I was already into. Yeah. Um for some and I it might here's the thing. I remember a long, long time ago talking to Todd on the telephone, him and him telling telling me about Nowhere Man uh airwolf and there was a third or fourth show um and i hadn't watched them and i don't i think my timing was different because i think i had uh i was competing with my my mother and her what programs she liked to watch which at the time oh god i don't know Qu it was when was quincy on um <laughs> i gotta look this up quincy mb when were you on uh oh my god yes yeah, 76 to 83 so you know, she had her programs, which were roughly around the same time that that yeah. uh, Airwolf would have been on. And I, of course, you know, I was, what, 10, 11? Um, you know, I had to, I was being sent to bed. So, um, like, I remember... Well, at the time when Airwolf premiered, uh, there was actually two helicopter shows that kind of premiered around the uh, same time. And Blue Thunder. Blue Thunder was the first one. It actually premiered about six weeks before Airwolf. And I was a big fan of Blue Thunder. Uh, and then when Airwolf came on, it just kind of blew them away. I mean, the helicopter was just so much more cool. And let's face it, that's what the main character was, was the helicopter. I mean, this helicopter didn't sound like a helicopter. It made this weird screaming sound while it was flying and and stuff it had these cool guns that kind of like you know it came out and they hit it inside of a like a volcano i mean that was awesome i mean they stole it from the government hit it in a volcano and the government had no choice but to basically say okay guys we know you've got it hidden. We know we're not going to be able to get it from you and you guys are pretty you know like awesome pilots anyway so here do our bidding for us I mean, that's the major problem. I mean, the, the there was Mash was still on the air. Uh, Blue Thunder no, became a TV series in up till 1983. Yeah, yeah. I was so this is 1984. Yeah, but there's like a year in between. Oh my god! Come Greatest on. American Hero. God. Greatest American Hero. Yes. Um, there's Greatest American Hero. Uh, what else is on around that time? Of uh, do you guys remember the V uh, miniseries? V, yes. Yes. V was on. That was a bit um, later, wasn't it? No, that was around the same time. Do you remember? Uh, what else was it? What else was I, I? There's a show that I'm missing. Hmm. Well, there's oh, a few short. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm there was gonna, other one. Well, we can't dun, forget dun, Magnum PI. Magnum PI, exactly. Uh, Magnum PI and Remington um, Steel. Remington Steel, yeah. Uh, Moonlighting was on around that time. Then you six had million uh, dollar man. six million dollar. No, that was earlier. Rip, Riptide. Riptide. Thank you. Riptide. That's the, uh, that one. And Simon and Simon. That's what I'm. Yes. Was, I don't oh, geez. Simon and Simon. So a lot I of these shows that were one. all on at the same time that were competing for us. And of course, there was no. I mean, you could record it on VHS. But that Houston. was kind of. The, my God, man. You're looking on the internet now. No, I'm uh, not. I'm uh, not. Uh, Matt Houston. What, who was uh, uh, that? Barnaby also, Jones. Uh, 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 McCaslin McCormick. Uh, we also had uh, Fat Man and uh, whatever the hell it was called. Um, 
Oh my god. Uh, what's it called? <laughs> Fat Man and Little but not not those are the bombs. <laughs> those are the bombs. <laughs> um what the hell is it that, called? That's not a very sensitive. It had, uh, it had Patrick Duffy in it. Title. Uh, I'm Googling this one. Patrick and Duffy we was forget, in. Uh, oh, Hag- oh, Cagney and Lacey. Miami, Miami Vice. Vice. Yeah, Miami, Miami Vice. Yes, yes, yes. I never watched that. That was a uh, stupid show. Was I, well, I remember watching it because we would turn on the Fox from uh, Vancouver at the time. 99.3 The Fox because they simulcast the uh, the show. Um, so you had instead of just the whatever crappy audio you had in your TV, you would have the TV plus the stereo. And that was really cool. Doom, do, do. I gotta look this up. Fat Castle. Fat Castle. Uh, what's that show? It's called shit. Patrick Hard Duffy. Castle and McCormick. Is that? Uh, but, but there's no, there's a show with him. There was also like like sitcoms. There was like Cheers and. Uh, oh my God. Who Bruce, is that actor? Bruce Company. I'm, I'm, I'm mixing it up now. And the fat man, something and the fat man. Jake and the fat man. Yeah, that's the show. Jake and the fat man uh, was on I from. Uh, let me. It, this might actually be a little bit. William Conrad. Uh, I remember right? that. Uh, oh, eighty-seven to ninety-two. Okay, so that character came later. Okay, um, okay. Here's here's a little. Why sorry, they... Joe Penny. Joe Penny. Joe Penny. Joe Penny. Uh, who was the guy who was on um, Riptide? There we go. Never mind. Sorry. Keep going. Okay. So here's a little one that I'm curious if you guys caught. Uh, what was it called? Tales of the Golden Monkey, I believe it was. Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Love that one. Beachcombers was still on then. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, uh, Beachcombers. Um, who else? What else was still on? I think we've listed every single show that was on in the 80s. I doubt it. No, I think we have. Oh, St. Elsewhere. Ah, uh, St. Elsewhere. That was actually one of my favorite shows. That was actually the first time uh, that I realized there were Canadian actors um, because it had Bruce Greenwood in it, who has gone on to the and Howie Star Mandel. Trek Prime. Um, uh, what, or not Prime. Uh, was it Star Trek Alpha. Whatever the hell the Three yeah. these are um, where he played the dude in the wheelchair. Um, but uh, yeah, St. Elsewhere was huge. And actually, I tweeted at um, a couple of years ago at Ed Bagley Jr. that uh, no one could ever replace uh, the character he played, uh, Victor Ehrlich, uh, the doctor. So, um, and he was like, ah, me too, man. But you know, I gotta say, St. Elsewhere holds me. Um, you know, I never forgot it because you can never, ever forget, ever forget the Tommy Westfall problem because it's really important that we all accept that pretty much every television program from the eighties was in the figment was a figment of a child's imagination. So there you go. The only thing I remember from saying elsewhere is the uh, I, I don't remember his name is the uh, the old guy in the in the final episode mooned somebody else. Oh yeah, um, that might have been Westfall, I think. Possibly. I don't remember. I don't recall. Uh, there there was a character who uh, it was apparently the first naked bum on network broadcasts or something. Yeah. Um, and it was a uh one of the characters uh dropping his pants and exposing his butt yeah um but there was also uh and he goes what does he say uh he, he basically said kiss my ass um but the uh what was the other uh thing at the same time keg hagney and lacy had the first what i think was the first program to feature the phrase son of a bitch um, which was a big deal back when it was on because that was considered a naughty, naughty word. You couldn't say bitch, not and you could not say son of a bitch. Uh, but yeah, so I, cause I remember when, uh, uh, uh Sharon glass, uh, glass. Yeah. Um, and her character Cagney calling somebody a son of a bitch for whatever reason. Um, but yeah, I remember I could never keep it great. Who was Cagney and who was Lacey? Cagney was anyway. The, yeah, okay. Do you do you, do you want to know? 
Um, no, not really. Oh, well, then screw that. Pardon right. me, that beard just came up. Hey, uh, so uh, we here's, here, but here's, for a while. But before you yeah. say anything, yeah. Um, but here's the scary thing uh, about Cagney and Lacey, which is why I'm thinking about this, is that apparently uh, a couple of days ago um, that Cagney and Lacey and Magnum PI are apparently going to be rebooted. Mm. But... Which I think is a terrible, terrible idea. So apparently CBS, the Colbert station, as I call it, um, has <laughs> has asked for people to come up with treatments for rebooting Magnum PI and uh, Cagney and Lacey. Uh, I think partly yeah. because of the success of Hawaii Five O, which I've actually never seen the rebooted Hawaii Five O. I still remember. Uh, the original one, book them, Neto. Um, so I don't know. I don't, I, mm, I don't know. It, uh, mm, uh, I'm kind of, of, of all the programs not to uh, reboot is Magnum PI because John Hillerman's dead. Um, we can't have him in the show to at least, you know, show up to be like, Magnum, God damn it. You know, or uh, these gonna be reboots with new, like new actors and everything. Well, I, I, or... I, I assume so. I mean, uh, well, isn't Selleck doing uh, what is it, Blue Lake or whatever the fuck it is? Some uh, he's some doing some cop, cop show, show right out of now. New York. Um, something blue. Or so he's something? not like eighty five then. No, 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 no. Um, uh, well, Hillman passed away, I think, last year. Um, and the, uh, Hagman's still around the guy that played Larry, mm. um, or is it Larry Hagman? Did he play a character named Larry? Anyway, um, TC know. is still around, but of course these guys, you know, I mean, these actors are, you know, in their, you know, late seventies, you know, maybe even into their eighties now, but, um, yeah, um, maybe are they that old? I don't even know. Um, but anyway, the, the point being is that these shows are of their time and they should not be brought back. And I'm sorry that CBS can't, for some reason, come up with new material. <laughs> um, you know, like, hmm, maybe we should do a show about a private investigator in Hawaii. We'll call him Ted. And <laughs> he won't have a friend who flies helicopters. He will have a guy who has a boat. You know, they could at least try and hide the fact that they're doing it. Um, there's, I mean, there's a million other stories that you could tell in Hawaii that, that don't include Magnum. Um, but there's, there's tons of properties that you could dig into. Like, okay, so Shadowrun is one. Netflix attempted it with Bright. Apparently, Bright's been getting slammed by the critics. Um, that's getting that's... a sequel, and I did watch it, and it was actually quite good. Was it? Because I, 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 was, I was expecting it to suck. One of my favorite games. Did not too bad. Not too Shadowrun bad. is awesome as a game. The other thing that I have been dying for somebody to take and do is BattleTech. I want BattleTech. I actually heard and nobody will somebody... touch it. Nobody will no, touch it. I, I don't get about... it because not, uh, not entirely true i just heard not maybe a few months ago uh i was talking to some people at my D D thing and they were talking about how there is a uh potential for a tv show Ooh, that'd be awesome um, but i i mean for years but a, live, but a live action one um because i remember reading nice. the BattleTech uh books god um was it called the macross series or something i've forgotten no. Nope, nope, totally different. Um, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. The internet will solve my problem. Um, but essentially, yeah, the, the I remember reading the BattleTech novels. Um, and there were like there were tons. Uh, but of course, I don't remember I can't even find it right now looking on the internet, but essentially, but yeah, I mean, here you go. Um, returning to Battletech after 31 years, 
um you know that's an article written in 2015 so that just kind of shows you because I, I remember reading the BattleTech ones back in the late 80s you know even the, the early 90s yeah. um exactly. and i read about seven or eight of them in, in a row kind of thing before i lost interest but um they were actually they weren't terrible i mean they weren't amazing but they weren't terrible either and it was kind of cool to uh you know learn more about what that universe was about but so, you don't even need the novels you can pitch them out because the the people involved in the game i don't know if you know this but this is a this was a war game that fasa company produced back in the day i don't even know if fasa still owns the property but regardless that was who owned it back then when it was big and so in the process of, of building this game out they came up with all kinds of material about the characters the politics the the battles the layout of the galaxy as it stood right in terms of politics and the, what was going on in in the war and all this kind of stuff so you don't even need specific novels you don't need specific stories at all you've got shit tons of material that you can use to build your stories from that hmm. so it's i mean it's ready made for a writer's room really you just slap those books down on the table and let them have at it but it's just it's so huge it's so rich there's so much going on and who doesn't want to see 20 foot tall 100 ton fucking robots just duking it out on this battlefield right well i i actually was playing back in the 90s i mean i i played i think mech warrior and mech warrior 2 uh, which is sort of based in that universe, and Nerd. there's based in the universe. there's a um, but there's a, uh, a, a I think it's called is it called Mech Warrior Online? I think yeah, that was uh, yet another iteration of the game. Yeah, but yeah, well, it it's it's out. It just was released like last year, the year before. Um, so I can't they were what, redoing it then. Was it called Mech Warrior? I can't remember. But yeah, I mean, I, hell, I was like all about that kind of stuff because I always wanted to have a. Um, Cause you always had to start in like a Panther, <coughs> like a really crappy uh, little mech that basically ten you, know, you, you farted and it blew up. Um, <laughs> Cause I remember playing, was that, Hey Alan, was that with you where you went and visited somebody who lived on the base out of Machosen? Um I can't remember. This is so long ago, but um they lived in the PMQs out at, uh, at, uh, Royal roads. And for, I was with, I drove there with somebody. I don't remember who I was with. I thought it might be you, Alan, but maybe not. Um, but we drove out there and we actually were there and we hung out. We played, uh, battle tech. So, uh, um, no, it wasn't me, but I, I, it was only just the one time. But I didn't last very long. I got blown up like right away. And it's like, oh, well, what do you have to? I'm going to eject from my mech now. You know, that was kind of my experience of that game was, you know, getting waxed by somebody else. Um, <clears throat> but um, God, that's a God, that's such a long time ago. But didn't Mech Warrior kind of didn't it give birth to uh, what was that game? Uh, what was it called? Um, uh, b b b b uh, uh, with the orcs and the dudes, not Warcraft, but um, Warhammer. Warhammer. Uh, is Warhammer sort of the same age, or did it come out of sort of the BattleTech? Because I remember the gaming systems were quite sim uh, similar. Well, Warhammer has been around for a long time, but no, it's got nothing to do with Mac Warrior because Warhammer is English, and Mac Warrior guys are doing their own yeah. thing. But I I played Warhammer Fantasy very briefly back in high school, so it's been around for a long. But you time. but you could do the same sort of things where you could have like mechs on a map that you know buildings are in the way and you had to like measure and shit. Well, like that, that was uh, that's more of a Warhammer thing. But I have seen Battle uh, Warhammer Forty K. Yeah, or Warhammer Forty Thousand, and it's kind of similar, but. Um, only in the fact that some factions do have stuff that you could say are vaguely mech like, but uh, 40k is a lot darker for one thing. And 
they didn't go for mechs. The technology they use is, um, I don't even know how to describe it. It's this weird mix of like old tank type stuff and more high tech uh, speeder bike type stuff. Um, but there's not a lot of the mechs. They they didn't go for that kind of design aesthetic, probably because MechWarrior had already done it. And also uh, you mentioned Macross. And what else? What was the other big one, Alan, from back then uh, came out of Japan? Robotech. Yeah, sorry, I guess I wasn't into any of this stuff. So. <laughs> oh, my God. Wow. Wow, that's it. I'm out. So on that note, everybody, uh, Alan's bored, so therefore everyone else must be. Um, I will point out that uh, just this is just for this is this is only for Dave. Fuck you, Alan. Um, the game, the the publisher, uh, game maker, Piranha Games, is in Vancouver, and they are the ones that are currently working on uh, MechWarrior Online. Nice. They're also working on Mech Warrior 5, which is coming out this year, which I gather I had oh. no idea, but Mech Warrior 4 came out in 2001. So it's been oh, a while. Wow. Um, but this little tidbit of interest if back in 2002 you cared, you could actually play uh, Die Hard Nakatomi Plaza, which was made by the same <laughs> uh, company. So, but. I don't know if you know this, but A Good Day to Die Hard was released as well a few years ago. Um, uh, so there you go. So there's basically a bunch of video games out there that we could play in the Die Hard universe. Who <laughs> knew? Um, although I have to say, I kind of want to play Nakatomi Plaza because it came out a while ago and it has such things as the Zippo lighter. Uh, but anyway. Sweet. On that note, uh, good night, everyone. Thank you for enjoying the beer, which my bottle's gone, so I can't tell you what it was. The pomegranate. Yes, the Fantoma uh, pomegranate says, uh, dark saison. There you uh, go. It features a uh, pretzel wearing a hat. <laughs> pretzel wearing a hat. Bye, everyone. Alan, take us out. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Ha, 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 ha,